Oh, <sighs> Mr. Judd, you're here. Good job. I like to see folk take pride in their work, even if some might call that work menial. Not me, though. It's his ship, yes. basically. But he's very incompetent, it seems like. Yes. Like, it, like how did he make all of this money? Do you have a sense well, of that? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so when I got the role, I started to explore a lot of 21st century entrepreneurs, people like Elizabeth Holmes, who created Theranos, people like Billy McFarland, uh, mm -hmm. who's the, the brains behind Fire Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, and it feels like there now is an opportunity uh, to be really successful by s being a great salesperson without actually having anything worthy of selling. Um, so for me, it was absolutely in line with not only some of the entrepreneurs that we now see uh, gaining enormous success basically on Ponzi schemes, mm -hmm. but also a lot of leaders out there who aren't necessarily qualified to be in that position. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reflection of all of that. I'm Herman Judd. I believe in space tourism, not just because I run a space tourism company, but because I genuinely believe in it as a thing. There was this great story that I was talking about earlier where when I was listening to Dropout about Elizabeth Holmes, she designed, she had the guy who designed the turtlenecks that Steve Jobs wore mm -hmm. uh, personally design a turtleneck for her uh, in order to like sell herself as legitimate. So like, you know, for Judd, he literally has hair that's the equivalent to um, Richard Branson because he just feels like that's the person who's really super successful at space tourism. Mm -hmm. So if I can follow in pursuit of like that guy, I'll ultimately be successful as well. Rev, what are NASA saying? Is NASA saying? Is it is or are? Yes. What is they saying? And then of course you also have Iris there to back you up and to sort of like make all of your shitty requests good requests. Yeah. Thank you know God I mean? you have Iris. <laughs> Thank God, Thank God you have Iris. Is she really putting in, like, are you really putting in the work and like, like he's the face, but you're the brains, do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, uh I think she's the brains. Behind all this brawn? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> There's also the question of like, why would she even do it? But that's like a question you can ask so many people in the working world, yeah, do you know I, what mean? I mean, why does Kellyanne Conway do her job? Yeah. Why does, you know? It's mutually beneficial whether the other people see it or not. They they do they you know people get something from whether they're right. codependent is <laughs> is another question, but I I do feel like she believes in Judd. It's not an em I, I don't don't think her efforts are empty or unmotivated. We consider passengers as equals. Hi. Have you guys been on a cruise and like is hell really other people? Do you know I've what I mean? never been on a cruise. I haven't either. No. I thought I wanted to go on one. But I, people were like, no, you I don't, don't want to no. go on one. Cruises have unique viruses that only apparently happen on cruises that I just don't want to ever get. So I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Like what kind of viruses? Like the, in the north. Like in the water? Well, no, but. You, when you get on a cruise ship, you're yeah. basically in one giant petri dish. There's no way to get out. You can't run away from it. Mm. So. And everyone's touched every railing, and like everyone's. Right. If they have one bad tramp, then like they're all bad. And this is what I think is really going to happen on Avenue Five. I mean, you guys would one know better, tramp. but like, do you know what I mean? Like right now, at the beginning, the crises are sort of like, how are we going to tell the passengers how long? But like, you also have to think about like, well, everyone's shoes are going to run out of shoelaces or you know what I mean like whatever so it might be. many things <laughs> can go wrong if there are people to blame they shall be blamed I know nothing of the day-to-day -day goings on that has literally nothing to do with Herman Judd okay this show essentially is about the breakdown of society in a bubble <laughs> uh, it's it's you know when there are certain expectations and norms that define um, expectation itself. So if you expect to be on a trip for six weeks, that's very different than being stuck on a ship for six months, which is very different than being stuck on a ship for three years. So what happens to society and all of the social norms and even the hierarchical, uh, hierarchical structure 
of a ship when you start to take away things like the value of currency, when you start to take away things like being in a position of power because why yeah. are you any different than the person cleaning the rooms and why should the person cleaning the rooms continue to clean rooms if they don't really have a commitment to do so anymore. Yeah, are you still a part of the service industry yeah. if you're just so catapulting through space? The show really becomes a, a, an existential crisis at a certain point. Yeah, and do you have to keep paying them as their employer? Right, exactly. do they get overtime? <laughs> yeah. And what are you what are you paying them with? Mm -hmm. You know, there's. I read this amazing article about all of these billionaires who were starting to buy underground bunkers uh, to basically plan for the end of the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they there's this, like, futurist who gives talks. And at one of these talks, the, the questions started to become insane. And all of these billionaires started asking questions like, well what happens when the people that I, like, what do I pay the people that I want to do things for me underground and, like, my, you know, staff if I have nothing to offer but, like, food? And how do I protect myself from them if they turn uh, on me? how much freeze-dried turkey tetrazine should I order? It's, like, all I of order? these questions that are, like, oh, yeah, well, like, why would anybody want to work in yes. a world where everything's broken down. Do you retain your status yes. in, an, in during the apocalypse? But I do think what's so fascinating, again, about the show is, is as you see that breakdown, and the show almost begins act three of the Titanic. So it's like from there, it almost becomes like Breaking Bad, where expect the unexpected and expect things to go from bad to worse to unthinkable. And we want people to think about what... To, you know, what would I do in this situation? What would I do if I was on this ship? What would I do, you know, if everything is taken away from me? How would I, how would I act as a human being? We are Judd's Galaxies. Welcome to Avenue 5. <laughs>